Hello students. Today I am going to discuss second paper of Sabragamur Provincial Department of Education. Let's start the first question. A contractor who received a contract to build a huge building estimates that five men can prepare the land for the work in 30 days. According to the estimate, what is the total number of man days to be spent? First question, first part. Total work is equal to number of men multiplied by number of days. 5 men, 30 days. 5 multiplied by 30, answer is 150 man days. Look at the second part. When 5 men work for 10 days, he took out three men from the work and asked remaining two men to finish it soon. How many days two men will take to finish the work? This is the total amount of the work. If five men work for ten days, we have to find the completed amount of the work. Second part. Completed work. within 10 days number of men 5 and number of days 10 5 multiplied by 10 50 man days this is the total work and this is the completed work then find the remaining work remaining amount of work subtract 50 from 150 100 man days. Now you can see he took out 3 men from the work. So remaining number of men are 2. 5 men worked earlier. He took out 3 men. Remaining number of men. Five minus three, two. Then find number of days. To finish this work. Remaining work hundred man days and remaining number of men two. Hundred divided by two. Fifty days. This is the answer for second part. Look at third one. One of the building complains that number of days taken to prepare the land is two times than the estimated amount. Is it correct or wrong? Verify your answer by calculation. Earlier it estimate 30 days taken to complete this work. Estimated number of days. But here they work 10 days initially, then they take 50 days to complete it. So total number of days taken to complete this work is 10 plus 50. Number of days taken to complete it. Here 10 days and here another 50 days. 10 plus 50. Total 60 days. What is the relationship between these two? 30 multiplied by 2 equal to 60. So statement of the owner is correct. He says it is 2 times than the estimated amount. 30 multiplied by 2 equal 60. The statement is correct. Fourth part, show that the difference between amount of work done by five men together and the amount of work done by remaining two men 
is one third of the total amount of the work. Work done by five men, it is equal to 50 man days. Work done by remaining two men, it is equal 100 man days. What is the difference between these two? It is equal to 50. Difference of these two equal to 50. You have to show that it is one third of the total amount of the work. Total amount of work is 150. Here difference is 50. 50 over 150 equal one third. Work done by five men. It is equal to 50 man days. Work done by two men. It is equal to 100 man days. Difference of these two. 100 minus 50 equal 50 man days. Total work equal 150 man days. Then you have to write these two as a fraction. 50 over 150. Simplest fraction is 1 over 3. This is the answer for fourth one. Let's start second question part A. Simplify. 2x plus 3 multiply 3x plus 2. Here you have to remove bracket. 2x multiplied by 3x. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. x multiplied by x. x to the power 2. Then 2x multiplied by 2. 4x. 3 multiplied by 3x. 9x. 3 multiplied by 2. 6. Then write the simplest answer. 4x plus 9x. 11. Sorry 13x plus 6. This is the answer. Now look at part B. A, B, C are thin glass plates. A and B are square shape and C is rectangular. A and B are square shape and C is rectangular. Length of side of B is 1 unit less than 2 times of the length of a side of A. If the length of a side of A is X units, build up algebraic expression for the area of B. Length of one side of this square is x. Length of one side of square b is 1 unit less than 2 times of length of side of a. Here 2 times of x, 2x and 1 unit less than of a. Subtract 1. Breadth also 2x minus 1. In first part, question asks to find the area of square B. To find the area, multiply length and breadth area of B. 2x minus 1 multiply by 2x minus 1. Simplify it means you have to remove brackets. 2x multiply by 2x. 2 multiplied by 2, 4. x multiplied by x, x to the power 2. 2 x multiplied by minus 1, minus 2 x. Minus 1 multiplied by 2, minus 2 x. Minus 1 multiplied by minus 1, plus 1. Then simplify it. Minus 2 x and minus 2 x. at these 2. Minus 4 x, plus 1. Then second part. Length of a side of rectangle C is 9 units greater than length of a side of A. Here length of side of A is x. If 9 units greater than is x plus 9. And the breadth is 1 unit greater than the length of side of A. 1 unit greater than the side of length of A means x plus 1. Then you have to find the area of C as a trinomial expression. Area of C. Length multiply by breadth. And simplify it. Remove bracket. X multiply by X. X to the power 2. X multiply by 1. 1 X. 9 multiply by X. 9 X. 9 multiply by 1. 9 then simplify this one. 1x one plus 9x, 10x plus 9. This is the area of rectangle C. Third one, show that the sum of areas of A and B. Sum of areas of A and B is equal to the area of C when the value of x is 4. 
here area of a is x multiplied by x x to the power 2 then area of b is this expression first you have to add these two expressions and show that it is equal to area of c area of a is length multiplied by breadth x to the power 2 then take the sum of area of a and b area of a x to the power 2 area of b is this expression x to the power 2 plus 4x to the power 2 here coefficient is 1 1 plus 4 5 5 x to the power 2 minus 4x plus 1 question says substitute 4 4 x substitute the value of 4 4 x 5 multiplied by 4 to the power 2 then 4 multiplied by x means 4 multiplied by 4 plus 1. 5 multiplied by 4 to the power 2 equals 16. 4 multiplied by 4 16 plus 1. Here 80 minus 16 plus 1. The value is 65. This is the area of C. x to the power 2 10x plus 9 again substitute value 4 for x 4 to the power 2 10 multiplied by 4 plus 9 4 to the power 2 16 10 multiplied by 4 40 plus 9 the value is 65 now you can see area of a and b sum of area of a and b and area of c are equal This is the answer for third part. Let's start third question. First one, factorize this expression. 2x to the power 2 plus 3x. Here x is common to both. You can take it out from the brackets. Here remaining term is 2x. Here remaining term is 3. This is the answer for first part. Now look at second one x to the power 2 plus 3x minus 28. Factorize. First multiply first term and last term. Minus 28x to the power 2. Now write this as a pair of terms. When you multiply these two pair, it should be equal to this one. When you add these two pair, it should be equal to 3x. Suitable terms are 7x and 4x here plus 3x so you have to take plus 7x and minus 4x instead of 3x write these two terms x to the power 2 plus 7x minus 4x minus 20 now take common terms out here x common x plus 7 remaining take common terms minus 4 common remaining x plus 7 then again x plus 7 common to these two. Take it out. Remaining x minus 4. This is the answer for second part. Third one. Find the value of 35 to the power 2 minus 25 to the power 2 using the knowledge of factors. Here difference of two squares. You can write factors. 35 plus 25 and 35 minus 25 35 plus 25 is 60 35 minus 25 is 10 60 multiplied by 10 600 this is the answer for third part fourth part from the square shaped metal plate with the length of side 3x here length 3x Breadth also 3x. Square part with length of side 2y. Here length 2y. Breadth also 2y. Remove. As shown in the figure, write an algebraic expression for the area of the remaining part and factor it. Here area of this large square equal to 
3 x multiply by 3 x. Then area of small square is equal to 2 y multiply by 2 y. To find the area of this remaining part, you have to subtract area of this small square from the area of this large square. Area of the large square is 3x multiplied by 3x. Here same term. You can write this in index form. 3x to the power 2. Area of small square is 2y multiplied by 2y. Again same term. You can write this in index notation. 2y to the power 2. To find the area of remaining parts, subtract these two. Area of large square and this one is area of small square. Question says, factorize this expression. Again, you can see this is a difference of two squares. So, factors are add these two and subtract these two. 3x plus 2y and 3x minus 2y. This is the answer for fourth one. Look at question number four. In the composite plane figure shown here, PQR. PQR is a right angle triangle. PQ equal 3R and QR equal 2R. There is a semicircular part. This is semicircular part. Diameter is 2R. Diameter is 2R. Find the area of the triangle and the semicircle using R. If the area of the whole figure is A. Area of the whole figure is A. Show that R equals square within square root 7A divided by 32. Write the area of the triangle. It is equal to half into base into perpendicular height. Half multiplied by base is 2R. Perpendicular height is 3R. Now you can cancel these two. 2 and 2. 1 multiplied by 3, 3. R multiplied by R, R to the power 2. Then find the area of semicircle. Area of a circle is 5R squared. If it is a semicircle, multiply this one by half. Half multiplied by 5 is 22 over 7. Radius. Here diameter is 2R. So what is the radius? Radius is R, half of it. R multiplied by R. Then cancel 2 and 22, 11. 11 multiplied by r multiplied by r, 11 r to the power 2 divided by 7. Then find the area of the whole figure. You have to add the area of triangle and area of the semicircle. 3 r to the power 2 plus 11 r to the power 2 divided by 7. Question says area of whole figure is A. Now equal this expression to capital A. 3R to the power 2 plus 11R square divided by 7 equal to A. Here denominator is 1. To convert this into a 7, uh, you have to take common denominator. So convert this into 7. Multiply both by 7. 3R to the power 2 multiplied by 7, 1 multiplied by 7, 11R to the power 2 divided by 7 equal A. Here 21R to the power 2, 21R to the power 2, 11R to the power 2, now common denominator is 7 equals capital A. 21 plus 11, 32R to the power 2 divided by 7 equal A. In this expression, you have to subject R. So, take 7 and 32 to the right side by cross multiplication. Take 7 here and take 32 here. R2 equal 7 multiplied by A and take 32 here. Divide by 32. To subject the R, take the square root of both sides. Here squared and square root cancel. Only R remains. Right side within square root 7A divided by 32. This is the answer for fourth question. Let's start fifth question. Find the least common multiple of following algebraic expressions. First one 24, 8y and 10y to the power 2. 
first find the LCM of 24, 8 and 10. You have to divide these numbers by prime numbers. First I am going to divide by 2. 12, 4 and 5. Again divide by 2. 6, 2. You can't divide by 5. By 2 so write 5 here. Again divide by 2. 6 divided by 2, 3, 1 and here 5. Divide this one by 3, 3 divided by 3, 1 and write 5 here. Divide by 5, 1, 1, 1. To find the LCM, multiply these values and take the highest index of algebraic terms. Here y to the power 1, here y to the power 2. You have to select the highest index, so select y to the power 2. First multiply these numbers and write the algebraic term. Multiply these values. Answer is 120 y to the power 2. This is the answer for first part. Look at second one. There are three algebraic expressions. To find the LCM of these three expressions, first you have to factorize these three. First one, this is difference of two squares. Factors are x minus a and x plus a. Second one, it is a trinomial quadratic expression. To factorize this one, first multiply first term and last term. It is plus a to the power 2, x to the power 2. Then separate this into two terms. Product of these two terms should be equal to this one and sum of these two is equal to minus 2ax. Now what are the two terms? Minus 1ax and minus 1ax. Minus multiply by minus plus minus 1 minus 1. When you add these two it is equal to minus 2. Instead of minus 2ax write these two pair. Minus 1ax minus 1x. It is not necessary to write minus 1 here. Just write ax only. Now take common terms out. x is common remaining x minus a. Here take common terms out. Common term is minus a remaining x minus a. Then what is common for these two? x minus a common to both. Take it out. Remaining is x minus a. Now this is same term. You can write this as x minus a to the power 2. Now look at third algebraic expression. To factorize this one take common terms out. x common. Take it out. Remaining x minus a. These are the factors of these three algebraic expressions. Then to find the LCM, you have to select the highest index of each and every different algebraic expressions. First take this x, then x minus a, here x minus a to the power 2, here x minus a to the power 1 and here also x minus a to the power 1. You have to select the highest index. And here x plus a. Take this term also. Take each and every different algebraic terms with the highest index. That is the LCM. Then part B of fifth question. Chamal has taken three medicinal pills named ABC. The pill A is to be taken in every six x plus three hours. And pill B in every 8 times 2x plus 1 to the power 2 and c 3 times 2x to the power 2 minus 1 hours. If Chaman has taken the 3 pills together at a certain moment, find the time period that he has to wait to take 3 pills together again. Give the answer in an algebraic expression. 
you have to find the lcm of these three expressions then you can take it as the time take three pills together again Algebraic expressions are 6x plus 3, 8, 2x plus 1 to the power 2 and third one is 2. Before find the LCM, you have to factorize these three. Here common term is 3, take it out. 2x plus 1. Here you can't factorize this more, so write the same one. Here you can see 2x to the power 2. Write this as a square. Take it as 1 to the power 2. This is difference of two squares. So write the factors of this one as 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. LCM is, first find the LCM of these three numbers. 3 and 8 divide by prime numbers divide by 2 8 divide by 2 4 again divide by 2 again divide by 2 then divide by 3 multiply these numbers to find the LCM of 3 and 8 Then take the highest index of each and every different algebraic expressions. Here 2x to the power 2x plus 1 to the power 1. Here 2x plus 1 to the power 2. This is the highest index. So select this term. 2x plus 1 to the power 2. Then another different term. 2x minus 1. When you multiply these numbers, the value is 24. 2x plus 1 to the power 2, 2x minus 1. This is the answer for part B. Let's start sixth question first one. a plus 5 multiplied by a minus 3. Expand and simplify. a multiplied by a to the power 2, a multiplied by minus 3 minus 3a, 3 5 multiplied by a plus 5a. Plus 5 multiplied by minus 3 minus 15. Then simplify the answer. Minus 3a plus 5a. Simplest one is plus 2a. Then minus 15. Second part. Area of the rectangle is shown above is x squared minus 5x plus 6. If the length and breadth of it are a and b respectively. Find two binomial expressions suitable for A and B. You can find the area of this rectangle by multiplying A and B. It is also equal to this algebraic expression. First you have to factorize this algebraic expression. Two factors of this algebraic expression is equal to length and breadth. Area of rectangle equal x to the power 2 minus 5x plus 6. It is also equal to a multiplied by b. Length multiplied by breadth. First factorize this expression. This is a trinomial quadratic expression. First multiply first term and last term. Plus 6x to the power 2. Separate this into two terms. Product of these two should be equal to this one and Sum of these two should be equal to minus 5x. Two terms are minus 3x and minus 2x. Instead of minus 5x, write these two terms. x to the power 2 minus 3x minus 2x plus 6. Take x common here. x minus 3 and take minus 2 common. Again x minus 3. x minus 3 common to these two and remaining x minus 2. Now we write this expression as a product of two factors. These two factors are equal to a and b. Now select which one is a and which one is b. Normally we take larger one as length and smaller one as breadth. So in these two factors 
which one is the large one here subtracting 3 from x here subtracting 2 from x here this is the largest one and this is the smallest one so take this one as length and take this one as breadth length simply represent by x minus 2 breadth simple b represent by x minus 3 this is the answer for second one now look at third one show that rectangle become a square if the breadth is increased by unit you have to increase this breadth by one unit to increase by one unit you have to add one here x minus 3 plus 1 minus 3 plus 1 equal minus 2 then answer is x minus 2 here also x minus 2 now you can see length and breadth become equals if length and breadth are equal it is a square new breadth Increase this one by one unit. So add one here. Answer is x minus 2. Now length and breadth same. Length equal to breadth. It is a square. In the fourth one again you have to find LCM of these two expressions. First factorize this one x to the power 2 minus 4 write 4 as a square 2 to the power 2 then difference of two squares factors are x minus 2 and x plus 2 then take the take each and every different algebraic expressions from from these two lcm is x minus 2 here also x minus 2 take select it then x plus 2 then take x plus 3 this is the answer for fourth one. Let's start seventh question. In the triangle ABC, the bisector of angle BAC meets the side BC at T. Bisector of BAC. This line is the bisector of BAC. So this angle divide into two equal parts by this line. I am going to take this angle as x and this one as x. These two angles are equal. This large one is divided into two equal parts by AE line. Prove that ABE here ABE plus AEB equal to ACE plus AEC. In your answer sheets, I saw that some student tried to congruent these two triangles. Now check whether you can congruent these two. The data given here is not necessary to congruent these two triangles. Because here these two angle equal AE common side. But others are not equal these sides and angles are not equal. So you can't congruent these two triangles. Then you can have to find another method to prove first one. Now take the sum of interior angle of this triangle as 180. And take the sum of interior angle of this triangle also 180. I am going to write the first one. ABE plus AEB plus X. First write these two angles equal as data. BAC, BA, sorry, BAE equal to CAE equal to X given. Sum of these three equal to 180 degrees. This is first equation. Then write the sum of interior angle of this triangle. ACE plus AEC plus X equal 180. 
then this is the second equation write the reason for both sum of interior angle of triangles now observe these two equations right hand side 118 both if right hand side equal you can say left hand side also equal I am going to equal 1 and 2 ABE plus AEB plus X equal ACE plus AEC plus X now to obtain this answer you have to remove this x from both sides so subtract x from both sides you can cancel x remaining one is abe plus ab equals ace plus ac this is the answer here you can write the reason as axiom Now look at second one. Copy this diagram into answer script and produce the side BC up to D. Produce this side BC up to D. Here D. Prove that angle ABC. This one is angle ABC. Is equal to ACD. Minus 2 times BAE. In this triangle ABC, this is exterior angle. This exterior angle equal to sum of interior opposite angle. ACD equal to ABC plus BAC. Now you can see here BAC bisect by AE. These two parts equal. Instead of BAC, you can write 2 times of 1 angle. It means you can write 2 times BAE. First write ACD equal sum of these two angles. ABC plus BAC equal to ACD. Exterior angle equal sum of interior opposite angles. Now in the answer you have to subject ABC. So take this term into right hand side. Plus BAC become minus BAC. ACD minus. Instead of BAC you can write 2 times of BAE. This is the answer for second one. Let's start eighth question. Shown in the diagram is a wireframe prepared for a decoration work. It is made up of square part which the length of a side is 21. And four sectors on each side. These are the four sectors on each side. With central angle 60 degrees are fixed around the square. There are two wire rods perpendicular to each other. It means these two perpendicular to each other are fixed in the middle of the square reinforce of the frame. Find the perimeter of the whole frame. Perimeter means you have to add the length of these sides. Here these are arc length of four sectors and this is the radius of the sector here radius this one also radius 21 and here 21 this is a uh, radius of this sector again 21 radius 21 and 21 first find the arc length of these sectors 
angle of the sector 60 degrees over 360 degrees into 2 phi r 60 over 360 2 phi is 22 over 7 here radius is 21 centimeter now cancel 7 and 21 here 3 60 and 360 6 2 and 6 3 then cancel 3 and 3 length of the arc is 22 centimeters now find the perimeter of this decoration there are four sectors so this arc length multiply by 4 and you have to add these four radii 21 multiply by 4 88 plus 84 the perimeter is 172 centimeters. This is the answer for first one. Now second part, find the total length of the wire used to make the frame. You have to find total length of these wire rods. Now take how many 21, how many wire rods with length 21 centimeter, count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And uh, there are 10 rods with 21 centimeter length. And here arc length is 22. There are 4 arcs with length 22 centimeter. You have to add all to find the total length. Second one total length is. 10 wire rods with 21 centimeter and 4 wire rods with 22 centimeters. 210 plus 88. Total length is 298 centimeter. This is the answer for second one. Look at third one. Small paper flowers are to be fixed on the perimeter of the frame. Such that the difference between two flowers is 2 cm. Show that number of flowers required is less than 90. So you have to fix paper flowers along this boundary. Length of this boundary is 172 cm. Perimeter of this figure. The gap between two flowers is 2 cm. So you to find the number of gaps, you have to divide this one by 2. 172 divided by 2 is 86. It is equal to number of flowers. Number of flowers or number of gaps. You have to divide 172 by 2 cm. Answer is 86. Question says, show that it is less than 90. So write 86 is less than 90. Fourth one, if the amount of money spent to make the frame is 2500 and the cost for preparing fixing one flower is 15 rupees, find the total cost. There are 86 flowers, cost for one flower is 15. So multiply 86 by 15 and add 2500 to it, find the total cost. Cost for flowers is 86 multiplied by 15. It is 1290 rupees. To find total cost, add 2500 to it. Total cost is 3790 rupees. This is the answer for fourth one. Let's start ninth question. Of the triangle ABC, AB equal to BC. AB equal to BC. ABC is 90 degrees. AP and CQ are perpendiculars. AP and CQ are perpendiculars drawn to the line passes through B from A and C. AP and CQ are perpendiculars to this line. Perpendicular means here right angle. 
copy down above diagram on your answer sheet and mark this data. Second part, find the value of BCA. You have to find the value of this angle. Now look at triangle ABC. Two sides are equal. What you can say about opposite angles? In a triangle, if two sides are equal, then opposite angle should be equal. I am going to take this one as Y. Sum of interior angle of a triangle equal to 180, then you can find the value of Y. ABC equal to 90 degrees. It is given. AP equal to BC. It is also given. If two sides equal, then opposite angles equal. BAC angle equal to BCA. And take these two as Y. Write the reason. Angles opposite to equal sides. Now take the sum of interior angle of this triangle as 180. 90 plus y plus y equal 180. Write the reason. Sum of interior angle of triangle. y plus y 2y. Subtract 90 from right side. 180 minus 90, 90. Divide both sides by 2. Y is equal 45 degrees. Question asks the value of BCA. BCA equal to 45 degrees. This is the answer for second one. Now look at third one. Show that BCQ. BCQ this one. Equal to PBA. PBA this one. I am going to take this BCQ angle as X. Now look at this triangle. This is a right angle triangle. If this one is X. What is the magnitude of this angle? In a right angle triangle one angle is always 90. Now consider remaining two angles. Sum of remaining two angles also equal to 90 because sum of these three equal to 180. If one angle x and sum of these two equal to 90, you can take the remaining one as 90 minus x. If you take this one as x, here 90, magnitude of this one is 90 minus x. Now take the sum of these three angles. It is equal to 180. Sum of these three equal to 180. 180 minus 90 equal to 90. Sum of these two should be equal to 90. If this one 90 minus x, this angle should be equal to x. Now in the third part, you have to show that these two angles are equal. Third one. First take BCQ as X. Then you know BQC equal to 90. Then write the sum of interior angle of this triangle. QBC plus 90 plus X equal 180. Sum of interior angle of triangle. Now subject QBC here. Take 90 and X into the right side. It becomes minus 90 and minus 6. 180 minus 90, 90 and minus 6. This is the magnitude of QBC. And here 90. Then write the sum of these three angles. It is equal to 180.
ए बी पी प्लस नाइंटी प्लस नाइंटी माइनस सिक्स इक्वल वन हंड्रेड एटी रीजन हियर इज सम ऑफ एंगल ऑन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन नाइंटी प्लस नाइंटी वन हंड्रेड एटी नौ सब्जेक्ट ए पी बी हि टेक् वन हंड्रेड एटी हि इट बिकम्स वन हंड्रेड माइनस वन हंड्रेड एटी टेक् माइनस सिक्स इंटू रईट सैड इट बिकम प्लस सिक्स वन हंड्रेड एटी एंड वन हंड्रेड एटी कैंसल ए बी पी equal to x now first we take bcq as x finally we obtain abb as x so what you can say about these two it is equal bcq equal to abp equal to x axioms this is the answer for third one fourth part Prove that triangle ABP and BCQ are congruent. This is APB triangle and this one is BQC triangle. Now you can see one side is equal AB equal to BC, and here ninety degree angle, and here X here also X. Now two angle and one side, two angle and one side. These two triangles are congruent under the case angle angle side. AB equal to BC. It is given. Then APB equal to BQC equal to ninety. It is also given. Then ABP equal to BCQ equal to X. We proved it in the third part. So proved above. Two angle and one side. Therefore, triangle APB congruent to triangle BCQ. Congruent case is angle angle side. In your answer sheets, I saw that some student take these angles as forty five. If you take these angles as forty five degrees, it is wrong. and this is the answer for fourth one let's start 10th question ab and ad are sides of the quadrilateral abcd are produced abcd is a quadrilateral so write a figure with four sides here don't draw a square or rectangle just draw a quadrilateral with four sides A B and A D sides produce. You have to produce A B and A D. Up to P and Q. Here P, here Q. B D joint. Here join B D. A B equal to A D. A B equal to A D. And P B C equal to Q D C. PBC. Take this angle as x and QDC. Take this one as x. These two angles equal. Denote this information on a diagram and prove that BC equal to DC. You have to show that these two sides are equal. Now observe this triangle. You can see these two sides are equal. In a triangle, if two sides are equal, then opposite angles are equal. This is the angle opposite to AB, and this is the angle opposite to AD. These two angles are equal. I am going to write symbol Y here. Then observe the sum of angle around this sum of angle on this straight line. Sum of these three angles equal to one hundred eighty. 
sum of these three also equal to 180. If these two equal and here these two equal, you can take this one also equal. CBD equal to CDB. If these two angles equal in this triangle DBC, you can use the converse of the theorem. In a triangle, if two angles equal, opposite sides are equal. Then you can say BC equal to DC. First, I am going to write these two angles. PBC equal to QDC. Take the symbol as X. It is given. Then write these two sides. AB equal to AD. It is also given. In this triangle, if these two sides are equal, you can say opposite angles are equal. ABD equal to ADB. Take these two as Y. Reason is angles opposite to equal sides. Now write the sum of angle on this straight line and take the sum of angles on this straight line. Here angle CBD, CBD plus x plus y equal 180. Take this equation as 1. Then here CDB plus x plus y equal 180 degrees. Second equation. Write the reason for both. Sum of angles on a straight line. Now you can see in these two equations right hand side equal 180 here also 180 therefore you can equal left hand sides of this equation equation number 1 equal to 2 cbd plus x plus y equal to cdb plus x plus y in this equation you can subtract x from both sides and subtract y from both sides Remaining are CBD and CDB. Here write the reason axiom. Now look at the diagram again. If these two angles are equal, what can you say about opposite sides? Opposite sides also equal. Then write. CD equal to CB. Reason is sides opposite to equal angle. In this question here we use the theorem. If two sides equal then opposite angles equal. Here we use the converse of it. If two angles equal, we can say opposite sides are equal. Let's start 11th one. Diagonal AC and BD of the quadrilateral intersecting at T. These two diagonals intersecting at T. If AB equal DC, AB equal to DC. AC equal BD. This line BD equal to AC. Show that triangle ABD congruent to ACD. Look at this triangle. Triangle ABD congruent to triangle ADC. You can see this is the common side to both triangles. And these two sides equal and BD equal to AC. These two triangles congruent under the case SA sorry SSS. Side, side, side. Prove that DAT equal to ADT in the second one. DAT, this angle. And ADT, this one. 
If you congruent these two triangles, what can you say about these two angles? They are corresponding elements of congruent triangles. I am going to put symbol as x here. Now we have to show that BAD equal to CDA. BAD equal to CDA. BAD is an angle of this triangle and CDA is an angle of this triangle. Again these two are corresponding elements of congruent triangle. These two also equal. Write the first one. Triangle ABD and ACD. AD is common side. Then write AB and DC. It is given. Then write BD and AC. It is also given. So two triangles are congruent. Congruent case is three sides. Side, side, side. This is the answer for first one. Now look at second one. You have to show that DAT equal to ADT. Reason is corresponding elements of congruent triangle. Then third one BAD equal to DCA. Reason also corresponding elements of congruent triangle. Second one DAT equal to ADT. Third one BAD equal to CDA. Write the same reason for both. Now look at fourth part. You have to show that BT equals to TC. BT equals to TC. Now consider this triangle. ATD triangle. You can see these two angles equal. If in a triangle two angles equal according to the converse of theorem. Opposite sides should be equal. In the question earlier given, BD equal to AC. Now you can prove AT equal to TD. Subtract these two parts from AC and BD separately. Remaining parts are BT and TC. Therefore, BTC, BT equal to TC. In triangle ATD. You can observe these two angles equal. TDA equal to TAD. Proved above. Then these two sides are equal. AT equal to TD. Reason is sides opposite to equal angles. Here we know AC line is equal to BD. Given. Take this as equation 1. And take this one as 2. Subtract 2 from 1. Subtract left hand side. AC minus AT. BD minus TD. Now look at here. AC minus AT. Remaining part is TC. Here BD minus TD. Remaining part is BT. This is the answer for fourth one. The reason here is axiom. Let's start twelfth question. First one, find the value of A. In this triangle, take the sum of interior angles 180. Then you can find A. A plus 2A plus 60 
equal 180. Reason is sum of interior angle of triangle. A plus A, A plus 2A equal to 3A. Subtract 60 from right hand side. 3A equal 120. Divide both sides by 3. A equal 40 degrees. This is the answer for first one. Now second part. According to the data, find the value of A, B and C. Here you can see this whole angle is equal to A. Sorry, this angle is equal to 90. And this one 30 and here A. A plus 30 equal to 90. A plus 30 equal to 90. It is given on the diagram. So subtract 30 from both sides. A equals 60 degrees. Then consider this small triangle. B is exterior angle. This exterior angle equal to sum of interior opposite angle. B equals 30 plus 80. 30 plus 50. Answer is 80. Reason is exterior angle equal to sum of interior opposite angles. Then to find C, take the sum of interior angle of this triangle as 180. C plus B plus A equal 180. B is 80. A is 60. Write the reason. Sum of interior angles of a triangle. Eighty plus sixty one hundred forty. Subtract one hundred forty from both sides. Value of C is forty degrees. Then part B. AB parallel to DC in the quadrilateral ABCD. AB parallel to DC. Bisectors of angles. Bisectors of angles ABC and BCD. A meet at O. BO is the bisect of ABC. So this ABC angle bisect by BO. These two angles equal. Take this as X. And CO is the bisect of BCD angle. This angle divided into two equal parts. Take this one as Y. Show that BCO equal 90 degrees. You have to show that this angle equal to 90 degrees. First write data. ABO equal to OBC equal to X. And here TCO equal to OCB equal to Y. Reason is angle bisectors now what you can say about sum of these two angles ABC plus DCB if these two are parallel lines these two are allied angles sum of pair of allied angle equal to 180 2x plus 2y equal to 180 Reason is sum of pair of allied angles. Now you can divide each and every term by 2. X plus Y equal 90 degrees. Now you know the sum of these two angles x and y. To find the value of BOC, take the sum of interior angle of BCO triangle. In triangle, 
BCO. BOC plus X plus Y equal 180. Sum of interior angles of triangle. For X plus Y you can substitute 90 degrees. BOC plus 90 equal 180. To find BOC, subtract 90 from both sides. The value of BOC is 90 degrees. This is the answer for part B. That is all for today.